Good morning and thanks for being with us this morning. I wanted to remind everyone we are not having coffee hour since everybody's schedule has changed so much for the summer. But once we get into September, uh, September 12th is our startup Sunday, we'll be resuming coffee hour. The Red Cross blood drive that was set for this coming week has been canceled uh, due to the fact that they set up another Red Cross blood drive at the Holiday Inn, which most of the people were transferred over to. Uh, so there will not be one at the church this week. Uh, we're also collecting gently worn shoes to donate to Honor Flight to that program. And if you'd like information on that, it's in the bulletin that was emailed to you. And finally, if your address, phone number, or email has changed since the last directory, would you please call Arlene at the church office and let her know. Trinity is open every Sunday to in-person worship at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And uh, next Sunday, I'll be uh, returning physically to uh, Trinity and we'll be celebrating Eucharist as well as a baptism at 10 o'clock. What a treat. Uh, we'll also be having virtual worship in addition to in-person worship so that uh, if we have those who don't feel comfortable returning in person yet, uh, they can still worship with us, as well as shut-ins or those who don't live in this geographical area. And it's our hope that beginning on August 8th, we'll actually be streaming the service directly from the church so we can all be worshiping together in what's known as the hybrid church model, which includes people uh, in worship in the building as well as people online. And since we're having Eucharist next Sunday, if you would like the consecrated sacrament to be brought to you, if you're gonna worship online, if you'd please call Arlene at the church office tomorrow and let her know so we can arrange to have that brought to you. So my friends, let us worship God in spirit and truth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of God. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We've denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the selfishness that enslaves us, the self-centered acts we have done and those done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Open our lips, O Lord. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And please join with me as we say together the invitatory psalm of the night. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, 
and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. All your works praise you, O oh Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading, Second Kings. A man came from Baal Sheshalha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, Ephesians chapter 3. I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work with, within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we all can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen.
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Third reading, John chapter 6. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, God must really get frustrated with us at times. Jesus got frustrated with his disciples, especially in Mark's gospel. 
And like Jesus' disciples, we're taught lessons over and over and over again and still don't seem to get the message. And today's story from Mark's gospel is a case in point. You know, the feeding of the 5,000 is one of a very small handful of stories that's found in all four of the gospels. And that means it was a story of uh, primary importance in the early Christian communities. After reading the story of Elisha in the Old Testament lesson this morning about feeding a hundred people with a small bit of food that was offered to God, you can certainly understand why people would associate Jesus with the prophet. When the people saw the sign that Jesus had done, Mark says, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. Yet what was so foundational about this story that all four gospel writers would feel it was important to include it, do you think the earliest disciples understood the teaching? And my question is, does the church today understand and practice the same teaching that is so essential? Now, I want to back up just a little bit and consider a profound difference in our modern world from the first century world that Jesus lived in. In the first century, people who were not wealthy or uh, did not have an official capacity of the Roman government had very, very few options to find food as they were traveling away from their home. In most cases, especially on short journeys, they prepared food at home that they carried with them. Hence, you have a boy who has bread and perhaps some dried fish. That was a common thing that they would have and that they would use for travel. So this crowd of 5,000 people that Mark is writing about undoubtedly had food with them. The real issue, the real issue of this story is whether they would share what they had with one another. Now we've heard it said, and a child shall lead them. And then we hear in this story, here is a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish. The point here is that Jesus was teaching them to share what they had with one another. Whether you're this young boy or whether you were a person of the 5,000 in the crowd. Those who were wealthy probably had a great deal more to share with others around them than those who were poor. The act of sharing was a lesson in becoming a community, you see, where everyone had enough to eat and where 12 baskets full of leftovers were collected so nothing was wasted. And of course, 12 baskets, that is a symbol of completeness, that there's enough that God will provide for all. Now, how do I know that this is the lesson that Jesus was trying to get across? Well, I want to tell you how I know that's the meaning of it. First of all, the early church in Jerusalem, after the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord, practiced this for some time. Luke writes in the book of Acts chapter 2, All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any who had need. This is what the community who were closest in time to Jesus actually practiced in their common life. This is the story of the feeding of the 5,000 all over again. The second reason I know this was the meeting was because Mark says at the end of today's reading, when Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. You see, the point of the story was not to entice the 5,000 people to follow him and depend on him to feed them. The point was that they learned to share with one another as a community together so they would all have enough to eat. Now, the earliest Christian followers in Jerusalem sincerely tried to live out this lesson, but they found it very difficult to maintain for a long time, and it kind of fell apart. 
St. Paul tried to get the church in Corinth to learn the very same lesson. And the second letter to the Corinthians, Paul's trying to get the Christians in Corinth, who many of were very well off, he was trying to get them to donate money to help the church in Jerusalem, who was suffering from a horrendous famine. And St. Paul then writes in 2 Corinthians 8 that he's asking the Corinthians to give from their wealth so that those who had much did not have too much and those who had little did not have too little. You see, to the early church and to St. Paul, this is God's reign in practice. This is God's economy of justice predicated on the ability to be responsible and care for one another, giving and receiving out of love for one another in humility and gratitude. If we are rich, why do we not give? And if we are poor, why do we refuse to receive? The answer, because we have not yet learned to love. We've not yet learned to be a community. There was a glaring example to me this past week of the failure to learn and live out the message that Jesus was trying to teach. An article in Global Citizen said this, it sounds like a dystopian science fiction novel. Climate change cooks oceans and forests. A pandemic endangers billions of people and world hunger surges. And a handful of mega wealthy men are pumping billions of dollars into their own personal space travel companies. But it's happening right now. And David Beasley, the head of the World Food Program, thinks that money could be put to better use. The article continues in a tweet on June 26th, Beasley called on Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, and Elon Musk to contribute the $6 billion needed to save 41 million people in 43 different countries who were at risk of starving this year. Now, obviously, there was no response to Beasley's challenge, not because the resources aren't there, but because billionaires, like many people in our world, have not learned the lesson that Jesus was teaching. In God's creation, we are all brothers and sisters in community. And yes, we are our brother and sister's keeper, and they are our keepers as well. Our mutual survival depends on the way we care for one another. And did you notice in the feeding story this morning that Jesus and the disciples end up on both the giving and the receiving side of the equation? They have nothing to offer, so they receive the meager gift of this young boy. And as Jesus distributes the abundance, God provides the disciples as he gathers up the scraps so nothing is wasted. Twelve baskets filled with leftovers to show how complete God's abundance truly is. Now I want to end the sermon by calling our attention to another scriptural jewel this morning from the book of Ephesians. As many have said before me, Christianity is not an inside, it is an inside job. It's not just about the way we practice our religion. Christianity is about strengthening who we are inside as we become a new creation, as we live out and embrace a new point of view. The author of Ephesians writes about the incredible wealth of possibilities available to those who believe. You see, there's a sea of hope if we can just see it. There's a mountain of faith if we can just believe it. And there's a world of love if we can just learn to accept and live in it. Bishop Thomas Cranmer put it this way in the Collect today. With God as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. And my friends, I want to say to you today, 
that eternal things are like treasures that are hidden in plain sight. You and I are treasures hidden in plain sight. We are each created to be an eternal treasure, a unique and unrepeatable miracle of God. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join with me in affirming our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Loving Father, light of our minds and souls, we thank you for sending Jesus to live among us, to make the way of the cross the way of life. And we praise you for sending the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, comfort us, and guide us into all truth. Holy Trinity, one God, let our praises come to you for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. We pray for your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that you would guard its unity and preserve it in peace, especially in areas where your church suffer violence because they bear the name of Christ. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Didi, our bishop, for Glenn, our priest, and for all lay ministers of Trinity Parish, that you would inspire and lead us all for your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O oh God. For our people of our world and of our nation, that you would instill in all people the desire for peace and mutual respect, that you would enlighten us to appreciate and care for this earth, our island home. For your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O oh God. We pray for those who struggle in poverty, for those who endure chronic pain, and for those who suffer from addictions in its many forms. 
We pray for those who live in fear of abuse. We pray for those who are ill, especially Rebecca, Martha, Kathy, Dana, Kristen, John and Marcy, Rudy, Sharon, Nancy, Andrew and Mary, Virginia, Nancy, Jessica, Michelle, Sean, Ruth, Judy, Michael, Judy, Ethan, Colleen, Wafa, Michael, Jane, Tom, Raylene, Ida, and Chris. Are there others? For your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O oh God. We thank you for the lives of those who are celebrating birthdays, for Rick and Nancy, and for the relationships of those who are celebrating anniversaries, for Dan and Ginny. Are there others? For your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O oh God. For the communion of, communion of saints who have gone before us, especially Larry, Brad Bennett's brother who recently died, and Barbara Johnson, whose life we celebrate on Saturday, and Virginia Chesbro from our memorial altar flower list. Are there others? Let us hear their voice of encouragement as we run the race of faith that is set before us. For your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O God. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by a fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, and whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Open our eyes and ears, O Father, that we may always become more aware of your spirit moving in the world. Heal us of the blindness of racism and the inequities which exist in our society. Motivate us to act in faithfulness as citizens under the reign of God, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, we pray today for those in our world who have been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. We pray for the sick, as well as those who treat patients with COVID. We pray that you give wisdom to those who are in charge of distributing vaccines, that it may be done with equity. We pray also for all who struggle mentally or financially during this pandemic. Show us all how we may be agents of your compassion and love and inspire us to act with the integrity and courage following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in saying a general thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for her. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, and for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, and which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen.
And please join with me also in a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. And let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you.